Welcome to episode four of Down the I-10 with Leah and Petey. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters on Down the I-10. We focus on the Arizona Coyotes American Hockey League affiliate Tucson Roadrunners. We're a few times each month. We'll talk to coaches and players and check in down the I-10. And as it's the midway point of the season, we thought we would touch base with Tucson Roadrunners head coach Jay Verity once again. Yeah, and we've... uh... Had Jay on the show before, and we're going to talk to him. Unfortunately, the the standings are not exactly where they'd like to be. It's a team that's, you know what, it, they've a lot of players, and we're going to talk to Jay about this. A lot of the players have been called up more than they anticipated. They've lost a lot of the defensemen throughout the year. It's been a tough year to try to keep their lineup together. So I'm looking forward to talking to Jay about that. Um, I've got my Roadrunner shirt on, and I got my back the A shirt for our trip to Tucson. Fantastic, love it. I'm yeah. loving it. It's my first time wearing it. Super excited about that. Excited to check in with Jay. I'm always just curious about, you know, how the call-ups affect the team and the taxi squad and where they are in the standings and if there's still a chance to make the playoffs. So that's all stuff we will ask Jay momentarily. Yeah, and it's hard because we, we talked to him earlier in the season too about that juggling the mix between winning and standings versus development and players and trying to get players here to the NHL, which they've clearly done a great job of. Because they're playing, and not just once in a while, but they have guys on this roster that are, are making solid contributions to this Coyotes team right now, and Dyson Mayo is definitely one of them. So we're going to talk to him about that too. So it, even though they are where they are in the standings, there's a lot of bright spots uh, on this Roadrunner team this year because they've been able to send guys to the big club. Absolutely. Well, we are hypothetically exiting the I-10, pulling into downtown Tucson. So what do you say we bring in Jay? All right, and we now welcome in Tucson Roadrunners head coach, Jay Verity. Jay, welcome there there to uh, Down the I-10. Thanks for having there me back, are. guys. I know, and Jay, I assume you just got off the ice, just had another tough day of practice. We did. We were, and, you know, got some work in this morning. We needed some work after last night and ready to move forward here. Yeah, let's talk about Bakersfield last night. You have Bakersfield Condors last night. You have them two more times this weekend, Friday, Saturday night. Uh, what's the plan for this weekend? What are the adjustments? Are there lineup changes? What's going on this weekend? Yeah, well, it's an exciting time. It's like a mini playoff series, this this ability to play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And Bakersfield's a good hockey team. They're well coached. They play hard. They got talent. They're good in transition. I think it's a great challenge for us right now where we're at in the season. Uh, I kind of love these these three-game sets. Yeah, we're going to talk about the where we're at now. It's been a, it's been a few you know long weeks since we've had you on last day, so we're going to use this time as kind of a mid season temperature check. Let's see where we're at, report card, and let's see where we're going for the future. So when we look at the standings in the Pacific Division, it's probably not what you had envisioned with the Tucson Roadrunners when the season began. Um, and and hey, let's let's not make excuses. There were players that have been anticipated to be part of your roster that have been with the big club all season. So that's disrupted you um, cancellations through COVID. There's all kinds of things, but let's just say right now you're towards the bottom end. Where do you grade your season so far as a team? Yeah. Now where we want to be, I think um, you alluded to it in the question almost like that's not where we want to be as a group. Um, there are things that happen and we were able to kind of grind our way through COVID so far. We haven't lost a ton of games. Uh, we've played some games shorthanded. As an organization, we felt it was important to play those games, not to reschedule those or back out of those. Um, so we've had lots of call-ups. We've had lots of people in and out, but that's all part of the American Hockey League. All the other teams are going through it. Um, you know, and from a, from a team standpoint here in Tucson, um, not the grade we wanted. Uh, from an individual development score here in Tucson – I think we've done a pretty good job of preparing guys to play NHL games, which is also part of what we have to do here. You talk about, you know, losing players to the Coyotes, and obviously that's something you deal with, just it's the nature of the American Hockey League. But players like Dyson Mayo and J.J. Mosier have been kind of a staple now of the Coyotes decor when that was intended to be the decor for this team. So how do you as a coach and as a team manage that? Uh, next man up mentality here, um, train the next group of players and make sure they're ready. Uh, make sure our call-ups are ready to fill in when a player goes up. And more importantly, when the Coyotes game come up, comes on, cheer for those guys. 
there are guys and and the goal for all our players and, and our staff for that matter is to make it to the next level to be NHL um, players coaches trainers whatever it is we lost a an athletic trainer this year has gone up. Uh, Bill nerving has gone up. So there's been lots of transition, and that's exciting. Uh, so when we're here in the moment, live where your shoes are at is a saying we use a lot. So our shoes are here in Tucson. Let's get to work on everything we need to do to get better every day, uh, regardless of the circumstance or the situation. And it's one of the things we talked about, Jay, when you we had you on last time, we talked about that fine line between winning and standings and how you compete day to day versus developing kids to play for the big club, because it is a fine line that you have to walk. And this year, probably more than any in recent memory, um, the number of players that are getting called up and not just for one or two. And, and you have those guys, too. But these are guys that are extended periods like Dyson Mayo. There is no way when this season started, you anticipated he was going to be an everyday defenseman playing the kind of minutes he's playing in this league. How do you feel about his progression? And what does that make you feel like as a guy that helped his development? Totally excited. I don't think it could happen to a better person, a more prepared player. Um, you know, it's one of those situations where as a coach, you're in meetings in the American league, you're meeting with the NHL staff and you're like, Hey, this guy could play, you know, I, I'm sure he could come up and play some minutes. He does everything for us at the American league level. He comes in, he's prepared. He works hard in practice. He mentors younger players. He makes the right play. He plays when he's hurt. Uh, he plays when he's sick, all the things positive you could say about a player we've always said that about Dyson and and uh he got his opportunity and made the most of it and, and that's um that's really exciting and he's one of those guys you cheer for um to continue the the success he's had I want to ask you about the taxi squad because that's something that has been re-implemented this season does that hurt you at all does it have any impact at all what is the effect of the taxi squad yeah, it's tough. So if you think of the American Hockey League, there's things that consume your players. There's injuries from the NHL team. There's injuries with your Tucson American Hockey League team. There's injuries in Rapid City with players that you have down there that happens in a normal season. So you, you're, you're kind of pulling from a, a pool of players that are disappearing constantly from different areas. This year, in addition, you have COVID – at all three levels, where a player in the NHL gets COVID, bang, they're gone 10 days, five days, whatever it is, till they can test back in. American Hockey League, you got COVID. East Coast League, you got COVID. <laughs> so, and then the taxi squad, on top of all three of those, where two or three guys disappear and go up, you know, Hudson Fashion, Cam Deneen, were both on that taxi squad for the extended trip uh, the Coyotes were just on, so... Uh, two players that we didn't have over that period of time. So there are these these constantly changing situations that are all a little new this year and, and hopefully the last year we see these situations. But, Jay, we talked about when they brought in the taxi squad early, when the NHL finally implemented that again, they said this was going to be something that ran through to the All-Star break. We're a week away from the All-Star break. Have you heard that that is going to continue following the All-Star break, or is this going to be, hey, I'm getting those guys back at that time of the season? Well, I think – I don't really know where it's at. We're waiting for word. We're spe There's a lot of speculation that uh, the taxi squads will be done potentially after the All-Star break. But at this time, we don't really have anybody on the taxi squad yeah. uh, in Arizona. The, there aren't a lot of extra players right now because – the other thing that's happened to the organization, there's just been a lot of long-term injuries that, that you can't account for uh, with both clubs. Well, let's get back to the standings for just one second, Jay. We, we talked about where you sit right now and where at this time of the season. And I know coaches look ahead. You can't help it. But to look at the schedule and, hey, how can we find a path? Is there still a way for this team to make the playoffs? Do you feel that there's a path to get you in the, in the playoff race? Yeah, I think when you play in our division, you're always playing so – every game's like a four-point game here on out. So you're, you're playing a lot of these opponents. You know, you're playing Bakersfield here. Uh, you got San Diego coming up. You got a set with Abbotsford. You got a set with Colorado. So there's these opportunities to gain points in a hurry in this division. 
you got to be good against uh, the teams you're competing with. You talked about um, some positives from this season, individual player development. Right now, Matias Michelli is 11th in the AHL scoring race. How important has his development been, and what have you seen from him so far this season? He's made a huge jump, um, and I think a lot of it is just a transition um, back to North American hockey. He played junior hockey here in North America, went over to Finland, played pro for a couple years, and came back in the adjustment in the beginning it had a lot to do with his pace and everybody's question was, can he play with pace here? You know, where is he there? And this is a, this is an extremely talented, elusively fast player that controls the game, um, you know, in comparison to maybe a Connor Garland in terms of how long he holds on to a puck, makes plays, makes the next plays all the time in the American hockey league, uh, you know, when I think of players that have been here in Tucson and moved on, um, I'm not saying his whole game is, is like Connor's, but his ability to control the puck and make plays is, is really impressive. And one thing, it's unfortunate for the poor kid because he finally looked like he was going to get oh. to play with the National League club and then the COVID bug struck and he had to go on the COVID. So unfortunate for him. But as we talk about Matias Michelli, Jan Anik is another guy that's in your in your top scoring. Um, I look at Ben McCartney. He's a guy that our, our Coyote fans have had a chance to look at. Is there anybody else that you look in your top 10 in scoring or at the back end that, that maybe the fan base with the Coyotes might not know about that they should be starting to get their eyes on? Yeah, I think Michael Carcone has had an unbelievable season for us, uh, and he was able to go up, uh, you know, and play games with the Coyotes. One game with the Coyotes this year. He's a player who's been grinding through uh, AHL hockey for a long time, and it it, it may be a, a case like Dyson Mayo. He may just take a little more time to get his chance. He's he's really led us offensively, led us with some some veteran leadership. Uh, down here in Tucson. He's been doing a really good job for us. And Coley Ochanok is, a, is another guy that we have on our back end that, that did go up for a period of time and, and play some games. And he does a good job for us down here as well. He's, he's, he's a young player. He's developing and, and really coming along. How would you grade Ivan Prozvitov at this point in the season? Yeah, you know, Ivan's uh, done a good job. He's gone in. He's had success in the American Hockey League. He was able to go up in a tough environment in Colorado there, play a great game. And right now he he's in a little bit of a tough spot. He's had a couple tough starts, but I think that's good for goaltenders. They, they find that challenge and they have to face that adversity and learn how to fight through that. And I think that's a big part of the American Hockey League and, and being able to get that next chance to go back in the net and, uh, and be successful again. Let's put your, your coaching and development hat back on again for a minute. We saw where you are in the standings. So when you go into the locker room, what's your approach on the development side for the remainder of the season? Like, What are you hoping to get out of these guys in the development developmental side of the game? Yeah, it's, if you looked at our schedule on like a, a big wall and the whole schedule's up there, the beginning of the season had a ton of practice. And so when you're in those practice segments and you have those practice days that are three and four days away from a game, you can really dig into a lot of stuff. Your practices can be a little longer, your development time, your skills guys can get on the ice and really work with those individuals during that period of time. And, uh, you know, we, we did take a lot of time with that. If you look at our schedule now, it's pretty much three games a week, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, travel, you know, recoup, practice once, so right now it's about game reps more than anything in development, which is also important, getting those key competitive situations and being ready to perform in those situations. That's development for me as well. Um, we talked about call-ups and all the players getting called up, and you mentioned before we got on air here, it hasn't just been players getting called up, trainers, um, and you, in fact – had a call up as well. So can you tell us a little bit about how <laughs> that whole situation unfolded? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a situation where, um, you know, Mario was out. Um, Andre went into protocol and um, there, there needed to be just another coach around. Um, so a lot like a player, I got a call and said, Hey, pack your bags. You're coming up. Be ready for practice tomorrow. <laughs> 
no different. Uh, the team was getting ready to head on the road to San Jose. I packed my bags, jumped in the truck, drove up to my friendly confines at the Renaissance and, and moved back in. Um, <laughs> Jay, you're always a guy. You get your bags packed all the time. For those that don't know Jay, his trunk, he's ready. I go, Let's go. Where do I got to be? Where do I got to coach? Tell me who I'm coaching. I'm ready. And yeah. that's the kind of Jay. He's a hockey guy to the core and just point him in the right direction. Tell him who he's got. And I completely trust him with anybody at any level to run the show. That's a great story though, that you're back in the show. Yeah. Um, we look at, uh, we look at, I know you've got these home games against Bakerfield. We'll talk about those before we wrap it up. But I, I want to say after that, um, did you throw those games back with Abbotsford in over the next few weeks? Yeah, we did. So um, the AHL all-star break got canceled. So we'll go on the road. Jim show right now. Um, in case you're the wondering, show, you're oh. gone. If you know Tucson, the gym show ties up the TCC. Oh yeah, the gym show is uh, quite the event in Tucson. It is. So it's buzzing here in Tucson. The ice goes out in Tucson on Sunday. Uh, we totally lose access to any of our locker room space, everything, uh, starting on Monday. So we'll practice in Chandler a couple days, and then we jump on the bus, head to San Diego. Uh, we'll have to practice in San Diego because there's no other ice play two in San Diego, and then we head up to Abbotsford for two, which was the all-star break, canceled the all-star game in the American Hockey League to fill in the games that teams missed uh, due to COVID. We'll throw those games back in in Abbotsford and then head to Colorado at the end of the trip. So uh, life that's on the awesome. road, uh, and that's uh, – it's all part, it's part of, of the part of the plan, though, right? I mean, that's just part of. Uh, unfortunately, if you're going to coach in Tucson, part of the annual pilgrimage is you, you got to get the hell out of the building for the gem show. So it's nothing you didn't know was coming, and you'll have your guys prepared as possible, and it might give you some time to practice away from the building, which might not be bad. Yeah, it's it's not terrible. I mean, uh, some people are like, oh, it's so long. You well, <laughs> half your schedule, you got to play on the road no matter what. So you're you're gone. What's it matter if it's together or apart? It's hockey. Like we got nice yeah. hotels. We got nice buses. We got good meals. Like, let's go. Yeah. You don't complain. One more thing about this upcoming weekend with Bakersfield on Friday, Saturday, we always talk to the fan base in Arizona that, Hey, jump in a car, get down to Tucson and watch some games. And, and this weekend against Bakersfield, a team that's above you in the standings, you got some really good specials this weekend on Friday and Saturday. And uh, on Friday night, it's kind of embracing the Southwest heritage of, of old Tucson and new Tucson. It's hashtag vamos Tucson and the, the Lazo bringing the whole Southwestern vibe together. But the big thing for me, it's $3 hot dogs, $2 soft drinks, and $3 beers. Any game where you can get a $3 bill, count beer, count me in. And then Saturday night, one of Jay's favorite time of the years, Saturday night is Star Wars night. So who in the Valley wants to miss out on Saturday night, Star Wars night down in Tucson? Jay, are you dressing up for Star Wars night? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it on you. Like I think if there was a night that I had to dress up, I want to dress up on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I want to go cowboy boots, cowboy hat, bola tie. Like that yeah, would be I, incredible. I yeah. mean, if behind the we're bench. Gonna talk about a night. It's probably Friday <laughs> would be a better. Fit for me. I could see it. That's actually not a bad look for you, Jay. Cowboy hat and boots behind the bench, some spurs, <laughs> get yeah. them giddy up. But so I don't again, have any spurs. But I got the cowboy boots and I, I got the hat. So. So if you're if you're here and listening and you want to see all the players that we've talked about throughout the season and all the guys that have had their you know debut with the Coyotes, they play down in Tucson. It's a two hour drive. Go down, get dinner, dress up as Darth Vader and go to the game on Saturday night or put your cowboy <laughs> hat on for Friday night. Because I tell you what, this is where the future stars of the Arizona Coyotes are playing. And it's it's a fun building. The atmosphere is great do like Leah and I and head down the I-10. And I don't know if Jay knows this, Leah. Maybe I'm breaking news here today. Leah and I and Craig are physically heading down the I-10 um, sometime in the next 30 days, and we're going to be doing a show from the TCC. We're working on some details yet, but we will be there live to watch those two. A true down the I-10. Yeah. <laughs> so we're really excited about it. And I know we're still working on some details and building availability and so forth, but we're really looking forward to doing that. Just a full sit down right in the coach's office, maybe in the lounge. I know. Can you imagine oh, yeah. turning Petey's the mic on? been talking about that for months. Oh, get on the mic with with Potsy, Slaney, and yourself. That's a show right there. Like, who wouldn't tune in for that? Right, it, right in there. 
might have to erase <laughs> a couple boards and slide a couple shutters. <laughs> yeah. We'll be okay. <laughs> well, Jay, thank you so much for joining us once again for another episode of Down the I-10. Um, best of luck this weekend against Bakerfield, Bakersfield and throughout the rest of the season. We appreciate you hopping on with us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Always fun, guys. Thank you.